There we go. Take it off from there. All right. Um, our packages, chapters five and chapter 18. Uh, this covers developmental workflow in Git and GitHub. I learned a lot more than I thought, and I was so happy to, to do so. Uh, first, I'm just going to kind of go over the slides and the concepts, and then we'll work through a live uh, code example. Uh, let's see what. It, so, um, chapters five and 18 covered the uh, RStudio projects and dev tools um, and used this a lot uh, Git and GitHub for chapter 18. So I'm going to start just kind of with, with a summary of the key concepts for chapter five, and that's the uh, workflow. Which slide are you presenting? I can see the R package, the first slide. Are you still at the first slide? It's not. When I go, it's not going with it? No. Yeah, I'm also still seeing the first slide. Uh, huh. Yeah, so the first slide. So it doesn't go with the when I change, doesn't go with it. Huh. You you're you're presenting inside our studio. Mm, from the browser. Yeah, because no. we are seeing your our studio window, I think. Yeah. Not browser. Yeah, we are seeing the preview pane. Yeah, the preview pane in your studio. Oh. I think you should um, share the the other window of the browser itself. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, now you're seeing yes. the browser. Okay. Nice. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sure. Now. <laughs> oh yeah. That's good. Oh. Thanks, Frank Peter, for noticing that. Yes. All right. So. The first part of it talks about uh, just naming conventions and a, uh, a package uh, to help you. It will identify if it's already on CRAN. It will open up Wikipedia, what the uh, term is. And um, I'll give a better description or go more to what it looks like at, in a bit here. Um, and then package creation with use this create package and you just feed it um, what you want to name the directory and it will preload start R and a new R studio project with an R directory, a description file and a namespace file. And those are the three things you need to have an R package with. Um, the chapter goes into R Studio projects. Each project is isolated with a file browser and working directory already set for you and keyboard shortcuts. Um, having the working directory set for you already is wonderful. Um, and there's some more um, guidance about working directory and file path discipline. Um, this is something I picked up. Um, I haven't run into that issue where I'm trying to set working directories, but I didn't think about it too much. Um, but the suggest there's a big emphasis on uh, don't fiddle with your working directory in R scripts and your R packages. Um, you want to write paths that convey your intent explicitly. And they provided some path helpers of test that test path and FS path package. If you need to do that, I haven't used any of these functions. I've typically will kind of use work in the data raw um, file directly and call here, here. Um, that's been my workflow. So those are new items. The load all in DevTools um, simulates the package environment so that you can iterate quickly and check to see if your functions work. Um, it identifies the 
uh, some keyboard shortcuts and where to access that uh, function as well. I use this all the time and I didn't realize the, the power of it. Um, it made more sense after reading this that you know, you're not really working. It is simulating the environment. It's super handy to use to keep, um, I think they talked about rinse and repeat um, when you're working on a script or a function to see if it works in the environment. And so it's never thought about it in those terms before. So kind of going back to naming things, um, your package, um, I thought the advice was pretty good. You know, pick a name that's easy to Google, uh, pick a name that's easy to pronounce. Um, I just picked a, um, a name um, and that was the output from the available and it will open up in your tabs. Um, it's not letting me switch. Um, the Urban Dictionary, a global or easily fooled person, an easy target. So, But if I were to name that as a, a package, if I was gonna be studying ducks, I'd probably wanna put our duck on it or duck R after the end of it. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Please. Go ahead. Um, um, so in at the section where he said create a package, he said, uh, why won't create a package? He says, uh, uh, one may create, uh, let me read the place. He said, if a packet can technically do what you need, but it's very unergonomic for your use case, it is fair to say it does not meet your need. In this case, it will still make sense for you to develop your own implementation, that is new packet, or to write a wrapper function that hide the sharp edges. So I don't understand why, what are these um, um, wrapper functions? How do you write them in R? What are they? Are they Function uh, packages for what? I write, I write packages for my own internal use. Uh, I don't share any of mine because it's very use case. Um, so, but it's really convenient. Like I'm trying to think of an example, people make data entry errors all the time <laughs> with the people I work with. So I constantly have to change it. So I'll use a function to easily uh, change it based like a the grant. I'll change, I'll just write a function that I have to do all the time. Um, so that way I don't have to call a script. It's just easily available. So that's why I write my own packages and functions. Um, I'm not to the point where I'm gonna share anything, but does that answer your question? All right. Um, so those are called wrapper functions, right? Yes, for like create package. Yeah, the, the wrap-up functions could be something like uh, so sometimes maybe you, you need to use like two or three packages together and you always use them in the same order. So you can create a new function calling already the, those three packages, like a workflow, something like that. And, and, and he also said in that, in that paragraph that, that you read that Sometimes it, it, it's, it even makes sense to create your, your, your own implementation of things that already exist. If, if, if the, the package that already exists don't, don't, don't exactly uh, do what you want. Yeah. I was going to say, I use deplier all the time. Like I couldn't, all my functions almost all called deplier of some sort of filter or select statement. I can't, I, I'm really not writing independent <laughs> functions. It's really calling on a lot of tidyverse uh, deplier uh, to clean stuff up. All right. So Rafa, Rafa functions one needs to write them from scratch to do specific tasks, right? They are not like using just to use a deplier or some stuff like that. But you write your own functions that, with specific needs. So what differentiate Rafa functions with packages? 
I would say functions just live within a package and it's easier to kind of call it because then you have different environments um, and, you know, anyone can enhance my answer here, but, you know, from my perspective, it is just, it's easier in some sense because then you have to, you're talking about your global environments. It's just a, it's a work, yeah. basically a workflow response. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the, the main idea is that, is that if, if you need to do the same thing a lot of times, or if you uh, need to crop code and paste it in a lot of places, it should definitely be a function. That's that's the, the main point. But the first thing is to have functions, and um, if, if you have more than one function that needs to live together in the same place, it a package is the common way of bundling it together. And also, there is a, there are a lot of um, advantages that if you follow the package development idea, there are a lot of advantages on how um, how can you guarantee that your functions work in the, the same way, like testing. And we are going to through some of those points during this chapter. Yeah, but uh, the, the idea is that the for our programs. Um, package is the um, is the most common way of guaranteeing that the things work together. <laughs> yeah, and well, for my use case, for example, I work at several projects at once, and across those projects, I use um, one functions, uh, let's say. And sometimes when I'm working on this project, I think of, hey, maybe I can modify this function. And then, but then of course, because I'm at that time working on that project, maybe I will, uh, because I have the function still in an na.r file, I just modify it there. But then it doesn't modify it for my other projects. Whereas if you put everything like your utility functions in one package, if you modify it there, then it will be um, yeah, updated as a package and if you work in different projects, you just call the package uh, there, and then it will uh, it will call the same functions every time. So I think it just depends on the use case, and sometimes, um, like Kevin, I also use a lot of um, tidyverse packages. So my packages sometimes is just like a simpl a simplifying uh, my workflow so that I don't have to repeat things, that's it. All right, so that's the bare bones um, package structure. And in your R directory, you keep your R functions, your separate R functions there. And then the description file goes into your dependencies, um, just the name and then the namespace file. Oh, uh, I don't have a good definition for it, but it's super important. Um, it tells you what you're importing and exporting out uh, so that you can use it. So there's no, um, if, yeah, it gets into, like if you don't want, it helps you define, if you have a, if you decide you're gonna name a function filter and you're still using dplyr, you're gonna have to um, type in what uh, package you want to use that filter with, so to speak. And, um, and then we'll come back around and um, implement some of these concepts in a, uh, when we demonstrate. Um, Git and GitHub, um, I would say experience is key to using Git. Um, you know, it's really important to invest in the configuration with Git and GitHub. And there's a reference to Jenny Bryan's um, Git R book in there. Um, and I'll point this out again, but that was instrumental in getting the you know, really configure your system to work with Git and GitHub so you don't have to repeat yourself and make it easy on yourself when you're setting up a new uh, repository or a new package. Um, 
I would say Git has saved me countless hours. Um, it also can give you big headaches too, but the more you work with it, the better you'll get with it. I Last summer I crashed my laptop and a whole project and I was able to, in a half hour, get it up on a remote digital ocean server, had 95% of it back uh, because I simply didn't keep up on pushing. So that was a lesson learned. So I had a little bit more, um, not as in sync as I would like, but it was a lifesaver having Git, um, that backup, so to speak, in a Git repository. It also helps me yeah. work, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I quite agree with you that uh, you get more used to it by doing it because previously I just read and I was not practicing it. And now I do everything, I, I, I'm, it almost, almost part, becomes part of me. I'm doing my workflow and every day I explore new things. So the more you practice doing it, the more you become acquainted with it. I agree with you totally with that. Yeah. I would say it helps me work with more intent too. Um, these are just my own little observations. Uh, this morning I was working on a, I wanted a, a feature, you know, to put in a shiny app, a downloadable report. And then I'm like, oh, I should update this report. I'm like, separate issue. Cause you're working on, a, I was working on a, a branch. And I'm like, okay, that's another branch. That's another issue, another branch. <laughs> you're focused on getting this report available and can update it later. Um, Git, Git tracks your changes. It is, it's a version control system. It's super helpful in debugging and giving you a history of the project. Um, I think I may have lost a point there. No, no, it comes back. Um, but I make a point later is that they really give you some really good advice on your um, on your Git, mess Git messages to focus on the why you did this. Um, this happened to me last week is I know what I did. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> and I didn't put a message. Why the yeah, hell I did I do that? Go ahead. Um, I don't know what happens sometimes when I try to, uh, when I commit a message and, and I open uh, R Studio and commit GitHub, um, Git pen, when I click to see the commit, it will say um, the commit is extremely large. I, I don't know whether you know that thing. Oh, is that because of the file type? Yeah, I don't know. Um, sometimes um, um, right now, when I commit, um, maybe, I don't know. Um, maybe when you come to experiment, I will show you what I mean. You, Are you committing maybe like uh, PDFs, uh, pictures, or your data? I, yeah. Because Git actually has a very small size limit, right? I mean, if you have uh, megabytes of data, then I think you will receive that warning. Yeah. It's... I have 2.2 .2 MB. Um, in the example I see. So for instance, when I commit and I go to history in R Studio, when I click the history, I want to see the history. Oh, I don't have, to. okay. When I cl click history, for it to show me the history of commit, it will show me a message that this commit is extremely large and may cause R Studio to slow down or even hang. Yeah, actually, I never Maybe explored I the it. limits of the R Studio pane, but um, I, you, usually when I'm reviewing really large files, I usually go to the command line. I don't, I don't know if R Studio there is any limitation in the size of the of yeah. the um, commit history. Yeah, maybe I can show after if you finish. Continue. Yeah, if if, if you can show us the, the that file, we could could maybe. 
have some some chips or <laughs> don't know. Yeah, um, after. So especially after, if after. you have like in the same file a lot of blocks, maybe because actually Git stores the the lines, the blocks of code that change in the file. So if you have a really rude file, I don't know, like ten thousand lines and changed a lot of different blocks, maybe our studio there is some limitation. I don't know. <laughs> So it's uh, one advice in that case, if, if you have like a really rude file that you change it a lot, is having different commits for different parts of the of the file. So Git's also helpful in debugging and gives you a history of the project. I, you know, I steal code from other projects. I'll go into my Git and see how did I do that before. <laughs> That's one use I use it for. Um, Git branches. I work in Shiny a lot, and that's easy to mess something up. And it's, let's say I have Shiny in production, so to speak, or I do. So I'll, on the weekends, put it on a branch and just make sure you don't mess anything up. Um, so I can try new features and play and see what happens and see if I like um, the results. And then merge it back in by Monday and have it up and running uh, for Monday morning. So I, I love branches in that regard. Oh, you spare me. I just love this. I love the breakdown of the five com components of a commit because I never thought of it this way. Uh, gave me a unique perspective. I knew parts of it, but I never put it all together of what it meant. Um, so you have a SHA key unique identifier. You have the change set, the files that were modified, the commit message that is human readable, the parent, uh, that means the prior commits, um, there's none for initial commits and merge if you have two parents um, or two if you have typo there, two if you have backwards. Um, you have two if there's uh, they were merged and then the author. Um, never thought of it that way. Uh, had it broken down that way. And then I also like the two, uh, excuse me, the two stages of a commit. You're identifying what files will be associated with the commit and then the commit, the stage files. Um, I didn't have a really good practice. I was probably committing too much. I was committing different files with the same information. Now I kind of know to put the same files within the same commit message. Um, that's my big takeaway uh, from that component. Um, I may have talked about it also in there. Another thing I took away is I started putting a unit test or a, I didn't do a unit test on one because it was a ggplot but I made a change to a graph and then I did a, a test script to see that that, that worked, <laughs> see if I got the output. And that was super helpful that that may be in a, uh, the best practices for a git commit. Um, I called it the art of the commit uh, because it is, it's learning. You may be taking too long to commit. You may be committing too much. Um, but there's some guidelines that each commit should be minimal, but complete. So your minimal should focus on a single problem, uh, complete if you fix the bug, include a unit test with the commit. I like that a lot, um, especially if you have something in production, if you're just modifying things, it's a little trickier when you're first uh, producing something uh, to know when to commit it. Um, and also when you're doing narrative um, as well, but I'll tend to go maybe paragraphs or a section uh, to commit. Um, commit messages should be concise, but meaningful and focus on the why. Um, six months from now, you'll see what you did, but you may not know why you made that change. Um, and then again, up here, you know, if you complete, complete if you fix a bug and complete, uh, include the unit test with the commit. Uh, like I said, I had a ggplot. I wasn't sure how to do a unit test on that. Uh, so I just put a script with it um, that when I ran it, it looked 
much better. Um, yeah, some resources. Happy Git with R. This her section that talks about setting up SSH, uh, SSH uh, excuse me, SSH keys is really beneficial. It, you know, if you invest the time, just go set up with GitHub, the keys and tokens, it makes using use this, use GitHub so much easier. These were previous resources from the previous slide. Whoops, and I took a look at them. They look uh, really good. I wanted to point out that I know is really good. I use the Pro Git book all the time as a reference when I'm confused. And where I got tripped up in this section, in the Git section is the, because um, I don't work with a lot of people on code. So I was, um, I learned a lot with the forking because I'd forked a repo, but had never kept it in sync and really haven't contributed any code uh, from R uh, that way. And so I learned a lot just using the uh, R for data science um, book club, that repo, I downloaded that, forked it and put it in sync uh, did the directions to keep it in sync. And once I clean up some of my typos in here, I'll push it. <laughs> I'll try to do a Git request. Uh, but I had to learn a lot on that section. I, I was not as clear as I thought I was. And so this video on Git remotes was fantastic um, to break it down. I needed a video more than right. I was getting a little lost in the um, written steps. and. And I played with this Git Explorer too, and that looked pretty good as well. So if you want, I can go through, we can set up a package, a very basic package, and um, just kind of go through some of the workflow steps um, that we reviewed. So let me go back to our studio. close out this. Hey, you, you just remembered me that, that I need also to, to make a pull request of these lines back to the, <laughs> to the uh, for, for the data science community. <laughs> so I'm going to set up a package that I call it you. Oops. Create, create package. And I'm going to call it our duck. So, what it's going to do is give me a whole new R project pane to work in. And if you see, we have the description, namespace, and our directory. And I guess your R Studio window changes for because uh, when you create it, create it, you, when you use the use and um, they use this create function, it creates another window, right? Actually, yeah. Yeah, it's just seeing the, the old one. Okay. Let me. All right. No, 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 it's there. You're right. Now it looks normal. So now we have the description, namespace, and R directory. And R directory is where you put your functions. Um, I'm going to do use this again. Whoops. I need to be in my console. Use this.
git config use git use git because so, I, already, I already set up um, my uh, what was that um i have a question okay What was your question? Shamsuddin, you're, you're muted. Oh, I'm muted? No, yes, no, no, you no, are. Theory. Ah, OK. But um, do you hear me when I say, ask about the question first? Just that you had a question. Ah, OK. Um, I was saying um, I'm using Git, normally Git, in the terminal, I was not using use Git. So this is um, best way in R to use Git, right? Because I've never been using use Git, use this. I was just using Git, normally Git um, from the terminal. So um, this is more efficient in R. What do you think? I think so. All right. And yeah, you, this would be the, the easiest way, but actually R Studio has um, Git functionality um, built in on when you, yeah. if you go to file, create a project and create a package, there is one option there that you can check for um, initializing a Git repository or something. But especially if your pre project was already created without Git, you use this, use Git is the easiest way to configure everything. And okay. it also configures a lot of other stuff than okay. just initializing it. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. And I, like I said, really uh, spent some time configuring um, with use this, um, your Git and relationship with Git and GitHub. It saves you a ton of time uh, because a lot of times you have to re set up your user git um configuration yeah. for each project which is tiresome yeah. so the main reason why i use normal git at the terminal is like i'm using other projects like python and stuff like that i mostly work in the terminal so <laughs> i'm used to more the commands um that you can you use not the package uses um i think uh, maybe i can i will try use this to do stuff in a Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Yeah, but I think if you already use Git in the terminal, it's really easy to understand what use this is doing because it it tries to to get the Git function, the, the Git normal commands as functions yeah. inside there. So yeah. if you already know them, yeah. it's probably easier if, if to, to to understand what's going on, and it's easier to use it inside there also than having to change to the terminal and going back all the time. Okay, so all your experience is you are using this Git. Michael, you, are, you prefer using use this or you use Git at the terminal? Well, I actually prefer using um, a GUI, especially if I have many branches, uh, like uh, uh, Git crack, like Git Kraken, I really okay. like it. So I think it just uh, depends yeah. if you have a one a preferred uh, workflow, then just use it. Yeah. Yeah, you have to set your. For example, I work a lot of on on remote machines, but um, on other remote machines that I use, I always use Git on the command line. For example, but in my in my development machine, uh, I use yeah. Git mostly inside R Studio, even for projects okay. that that aren't only R. I sometimes use it inside R Studio. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, but sometimes um, I set several aliases that I find really useful. For example, um, like in Happy Git with R, I really enjoy her advice on the uh, Git commit amend with no edit. I really like it. And I, yeah, I mean, if you use the GUI, then you need several clicks. But then if you set an alias to do that, you just t uh, type uh, maybe uh, three, five letter and then you yeah. can quickly commit. Yeah, so but I, in the Git parent, 
you don't have the, those allies in the git current. It's easy. I like the git current, and I also use it just drag and drop and stuff like that. Yeah. So let me show you another. Well, I'm gonna. So it's giving me some options to um, not now, definitely, or negative. So I'm just gonna say definitely, and then yeah, it's gonna make me restart. Let me say yeah. One thing that's important to to get the, the difference right now is that uh, you 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 see that uh, actually Kevin don't have the Git panel before initializing the Git repo. The Git panel inside our studio only appears after you you initialize your your repository in the project. So the cool thing about um, plus another thing that I love about use this is once you do use this, you can say use uh, GitHub. Now it's going to so you probably, I don't know if you can see in my pane, but it just opened up a Git repository and GitHub for me. Now we are seeing just the R Studio. Uh, let me. Yeah, Michael said that Zoom has yet to configure how to make it so easy for people to play with Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, well, that's my new um, R package. It's already set up and ready to go. That's why I love use this. Oh, okay. So using use, use this, it automatically create the GitHub repo for you? Yeah, but you really Yeah, have they, they use GitHub function. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, but so, actually, it, it happened because Kevin already configured the, the login and, and the SSH yeah, yeah. key. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Nice. But it, it's, it's, it's awesome, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think... Uh, previously, I mentioned that I always uh, set my remote repo, clone it to the lo clone it locally. But then after I know about this, I just um, push uh, directly from my RStudio project. It's so easy. Actually, this functionality was a function that changed a lot um, on the end of the year. Uh, with the use this 2.0, I think it was released in January. A lot of functionalities that been that involved using GitHub enhanced a lot. Actually, like last year, they they weren't so good. They they are because now they are using a package called called GH on the on the background that really streamlined the interaction with the GitHub API. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's really good to work with GitHub inside there right now. But yeah. in the past, I think it, it wasn't like that. Yeah, it includes also GitHub action now. Yeah, 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 it's also a, a, a great, great point. I will, I will learn this GitHub, <laughs> this use this <laughs> today. I will just go to the documentation and learn it right yeah, now. You, you should definitely read the, go, go yeah. to the GitHub, uh, to the use this yeah, package, I will learn it in, uh, uh, vignettes and go through yeah, that. You, it, I will learn you'll it. be amazed. Yeah. Especially if you already work with Git, it's, it's easy. Yeah, I've already worked the... with it. Before. This one seems to be yeah, a little yeah. bit easier. It will encapsulate all the technicalities and some because sometimes I had to forget something. I need to go to <laughs> online to see how to do this with all those commands with Git. They are not on top of my head. I always Google them. <laughs> so yeah. with this packet, I can see. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, I remember that like the first time that I worked with Git, I, I was always like, oh, we have to add first, then commit, then, <laughs> then pushing. Then, and we, if we use it, it gets, it gets natural. Yeah. You just go there and type code. Yeah. But with when you're starting, it's really good to have a or interactive yeah. tool or just one function that do all the work. Yeah. It's so, it's so awkward to use Git at first. Uh, like I said, it's just practice. <laughs> Yeah, I think especially uh, many tutorials just teach you what's the function of this command and what's the function of that command. But then, yeah, I think just practice and fail multiple times having to restart 
uh, clone your repo all, all over again really, really force you to learn. Yeah, and, and actually, there are a lot of different workflows that work. So it's not easier to just see how what other people is doing and trying to 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 get your workflow integrated. So you, you kind of have to develop your own workflow around it. But uh, at least with use this, they did try to get one workflow that, that worked for our packages and, and that's it. And uh, it, it's not the, the workflow that we work with every language or every kind of project, but it's the workflow that works with our projects and the workflow that most of the community is using right now. Um, and technically you can use this you can do pull requests i wasn't ready to try to do pull requests from use this yet but uh, that's another option so all right you can do also pull request you can from from use this uh what else can okay you? okay let's see you GitHub actions, um, get app PR commands. Um, you can set your links, um, a release, um, browse GitHub issues. I was looking for that the other day. Yeah, there's all sorts of um, nice utility functions to use that make your life easier. Yeah, actually, Chansu didn't talk about the GitHub Actions, but there is a, um, I use this function called use GitHub Actions that they try to set a, um, a, a GitHub Action that test packages. Yeah, it works pretty good. Um, it sets it up nicely, I'm trying to think. Let's see if I can find the file, I'll show. There's nothing. I think where it's at. I may not be able to. I'm trying to think if it's in my um, what directory it's in. You're you're searching for the GitHub action. Yeah, I'm trying to think what um, it's in the dot GitHub fo uh, folder. That being the main, it's a yeah, direct right here, dot, dot right GitHub. Here, yeah, right here. It, 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 uh, use this create that that folders with that that YAML file that that's that's already calls a GitHub action for testing uh, a package is. It, uh, even on other uh, operational systems, you can test your package if it works on Windows, on Mac, or you know, and on Linux. And it'll run your. Um, you can also run it. Um, well, I guess that. I guess that's what you're saying. <laughs> I was going to say yeah. uh, it runs your tests too. Um, that's what I use it mainly for because I'm not uh, putting this particular package on CRAN, but I just run my test on it, um, and then. That's all I want it to do. Um, so when I push it, it runs that test and lets me know if there's any um, errors in there um, or anything I should check out. So. Yeah, and, and it is especially useful with other people who is trying to collaborate on your package. <laughs> if they try, if they pull requests on your on your on your package, it will run automatically those tests even if the person didn't didn't run the test in their own computer. So it's really useful for collaboration. You can set the, the guidelines for what kind of things can be merged or not in your package. Can anyone uh, send me like a quick link to learn more about GitHub Action? Because I've heard about it a lot, but then I've never used it, nor I know yeah. what it's actually used for, but it's actually it's, useful. it's pretty new. It's yeah. It, it became general available in two thousand twenty. 
So it's, yeah, it's so not something that yesterday. everyone knows, actually. I listened um, to one Actually, talk there, there were... Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I interrupted you. I said I listened to one talk yesterday also on our package development, and this shows how to use this GitHub uh, action. It was awesome presentation um, by one. Uh, she is um, our package reviewer from our open size, and she delivered a very well presentation on uh, package development. And she used um, um, GitHub action. So that's the first time I know what it is yesterday. So I, I think it's a cool thing, Michael. I will also explore it. I will share the video for her presentation, the way she used um, uh, GitHub action. If it's available, I'll check right now. Oh, that would be really Share great. First, please, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. Well, one thing that I, I like about the, these Git, Git workflows um, is the ability of. Uh, I, mostly, I'm using GitHub alone on my own projects, but I. I, I use a lot of GitHub to, to send code to people. Uh, instead of sending an email with a script, I, I upload it to GitHub and say, oh, you can pull my, you can clone my repo and run your analysis on, on a remote server or something. So I, I, even if the person is not contributing, contributing code to the repository, I, I like them to, to clone the repo to run the code. Mm -hmm. Do you do a pull request to yourself? Actually you, not. I, I mostly I mostly pull into the master branch. I, I, <laughs> I, I, that's one thing that I did too. This morning. <laughs> okay. Actually, I never try to do pull requests. If you use this, maybe using use this for that is it's go, it's probably going to to streamline the way of 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 using pull requests always instead of pulling to the main range. I know. I was just merging in. And uh, this, after reading this, I decided, OK, let me go through the dance. But I'm like, oh, it's such an extra step. And I, I'm the only one approving it, reviewing it. So I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> but I kind of like it. I mean, it was OK. It wasn't too much. But yeah, uh, if you must work alone, it's don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't make sense. But, but uh, 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 as a software development perspective, it's good to know the best practices. If, if you want to yeah. contribute to an open source project, it's good to understand how those things work. Um, if you're working on a large collaborative project, uh, it's, it's a good practice. Actually, I have one thing to share with the group, mm -hmm. uh, especially because it looks like Kevin um, brought a point that's really important. It's about commit messages. Commit messages. That that there there is one convention that I, I haven't really seen it being used on the on the R community. But let's see if I can share just a second. Uh, we need to be fast. It's not showing my. Okay, okay. Uh, you see my my window, my browser. There is this project. It's a. Uh, Oh, it's the, it's called conventional commits. Um, it, they they try to create some kind of guidelines for commit messages that they it, it, using these guidelines. You, you are never going to commit like for example files that don't 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 don't, don't fit in the same commit message. That you are never going to mix. Um, a file that uh, a commit that is about like improving, uh, like an edging feature of a package, and a, fa and a commit that is about refactoring or about updating docs or about fixing a bug. And actually, using this this structure from your Git log, you all, you you will already had that change log that that is possible of adding on your news file when releasing your file on your package, things like that. I will send in the select group that page. It's really interesting to, to read. So I will, I will not go, go further on, on this, but it's actually good. <laughs> so it's like a an agreement of uh, like a tag for your comments. Like 
in one word what you're yeah, actually like going said, I, doing I, I never comment. saw this being used in the R community, but uh, it's actually used a lot of, of some JavaScript on web development toolkits. And, and it's really good to, to see that, that if, if you use the command git log, it already have a, you, you can filter the, the, the commits based on just what is improvements to your package. And, and actually it works really nice if you are using semantic versioning with that, the, we haven't talked about um, about how to version your package yet, but if, if you follow this structure, it's easier to, to know when to increase the version number on the third number or the second number or the first number, if you are going to introduce breaking mm. changes or, or just a fix to a bug. It's, um, it's oh. more like a software so engineering. But it's okay, so there's a convention for that. Okay, what? I thought the number, I thought the number of the package version is just like uh, from the author's uh, whims. Like, okay, I want okay, to make I, it I 0 0.1.6. That, so yeah, that there is a convention. Okay, for... <laughs> all right, but, but I never there know. That, that, that in, there is a chapter in the book that is about version, so we are going to talk about it. So uh, when we right. talk about versioning, uh, I probably uh, am going to bring that also back. <laughs> we, we are going to talk about that. Because <laughs> actually, Chrome don't, don't establish an, an exactly way to version your package, but there are some, some common agreement about that. Mm. Yeah, so... I, I share in the chat GitHub action with R. Um, uh, one of the talk I um, listened yesterday, um, she is one of the guys that uh, people that develop this um, book from R Open Science. It's nice. just like one or two chapters, which is GitHub action with R. Yeah, actually, I need to study more about GitHub Actions also because I'm mostly using um, Prebuild GitHub Actions. I'm, I'm not creating my, my own GitHub Actions, but so what? You, you can do whatever you want with GitHub Actions, even like building web pages and building Yeah, so why not, why not we all discuss GitHub Action with R in R next week? <laughs> Learn it more. <laughs> um, we have... Um, um, one day that it's going to be about, um, exactly, I, I said that I'm going to present that, that is about testing and um, like, uh, automated checking, something like that, that, that we are going to talk about GitHub Actions in that meeting. Ah, okay. okay. So is it in two weeks, if I'm not mistaken? Oh, I, I, I need to check <laughs> The, but 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 I also I saw on this like channel that no one yeah it is no one proposed it yet to to present yeah. next week so I don't know if, if you guys think that it would be necessary to talk about other topics or something then. oh but uh, Shamshuddin now has a volunteer to present for next week okay oh sorry I I haven't checked it. Sorry. No, I just, <laughs> I just opened the, um, the sheet and I said, okay, let me put my name also, even though I don't know uh, much, but I'm learning it along the way. No, <laughs> nice. It's a, presenting is the way to, to learn more. <laughs> yeah, and I think, uh, I don't know about you guys, but it seems like, of course, this whole R Packages book is a massive book. And of course, uh, maybe... Uh, like after this discussion, it would it seems like it would be really great if we have um, one or two extra sessions. Maybe we can just uh, put a, a list of topics that we want to discuss and then maybe we can have extra sessions. I really don't mind because the aim of this, uh, uh, well, my aim of enrolling in this is not just to finish uh, reading the book from cover to cover, right? But to really know what's the best practices in developing our extensions. So, I mean, if you're willing to share our, uh, your knowledge and spend some time, I really don't mind. Yeah, I'm also with the, on that view because actually, like yeah. I said, uh, I, I think most of the people here mostly develop alone. So, so it, it's good to see how other, other persons do this yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, I don't even bother uh, making my comment message clear 
which <laughs> is actually I'm shooting myself uh, on my foot, really. <laughs> but yeah, it's because yeah, I'm only uh, working with my own. I don't have to bother making my comment message clear. But well, your, your little did I know, is going to... <laughs> my current <laughs> self actually. <laughs> yeah. you know you know next week so you know my commit method every time update 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. that that's what this conventional commits talk about if you read the they have a frequented like ex- ask questions in the end it's really nice to to read that too that they talk about exactly those, those topics why i do things that way why not to do <laughs> why I don't follow the, the, the same workflow that, that I had, had always followed. <laughs> and it, it's nice. All right. Thank you for that. And yeah, thank you for that. I think it's really useful. Um, maybe Michael, next week you present GitHub in action, GitHub action in R. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. We can do a, a, an extra session only about um, our, automated um, continuous integration tools. I don't know, think, but it, I, I think it's more, it, it's a more advanced topic here. I think there are some basic topics to, to run first. Like the, the next week would be like how to write functions. And I think we should cover these topics first. Yeah, I think uh, for the GitHub action, it seems like after we discuss um, how do I make sure my package works, and yeah, then afterwards we, we, we we'll discuss to... about the GitHub. Because yeah. right now I don't even know how to make my package works, and then I focus on the unit testing and so on. It's yeah, uh, I, I, I wouldn't know what to do with the knowledge. Topic is it's it's much be, it's much more yeah. important. But, yeah. so maybe, All right, maybe we can create a new session, maybe or using GitHub. Um, testing GitHub action or we can integrate it. Um, I don't know, maybe after our session, we can have a separate section and- um, Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Thank you, Michael. And thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Lucy, for cool understanding. And nice presentation from Kevin. Yeah. Thank you. So actually, I was thinking. Thank you, Kevin. Thank I have you, not. <laughs> I have not written any package. Um. So what I was in, I'm intending right now along this club, I start writing um my package. So as we go along, I'm writing developing my package, and at the end of this um, uh, book club, I will have my package because I have uh, what I intend to have to put it in a package. I have something that I did, and it's ready now to be uh, packaged. So as we go along, I'm learning uh, it's setup. So I'm advancing how to create the packet. So by the end of this book club, that is my intention to have that thing fully uh, working package. <laughs> yeah. Sounds cool. That's great. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the right mindset. I think it's, if you already have something that you use repeatedly and if, if it's already in a function, it's or at least yeah. in a lot of functions, it, it's yeah. perfect. It's the perfect condition. You just need to package okay. that. Yeah, yeah, I know that. But even okay. if it's not in functions, if it's just like a big script that you mm-hmm. you think, oh, I, I think a, a lot of people would find it useful if it is a package. We are going to discuss exactly how to, to go step by step. Yeah, also I want to ask, um, because my scripts sometimes I use, um, I don't know, like um, it takes a lot of time. So I use uh, parallel processing. Uh, can you include that thing in your function? Because sometimes if you if people are going to use your packet and they are not using they are not using parallel processing, what will happen? For instance, now um, actually it, it's a rush topic of itself talking about um, parallel parallel processing, uh, especially in a package because most of the time the parallel like uh, parallel processing infrastructure is like um, operational system specific, but there mm. are. S- some packages that um, that allow you to include that on your on your package. For example, if the user don't set anything, it's going to always run on a single thread. But the user can 
can add flags options for that to run okay. in parallel. Okay. We, that, that, that's a topic that we, we could have an extra session about, but it would be go, good to get on, it on the end of the, on the, the book club. Like because it's okay. about it's mostly about optimization and, and, and it's much more it's a topic much more relevant for advanced R than for R packages maybe <laughs> I agree but but we, we can no have problem. in the end a, a session just about how yeah. to integrate that on the package which it's probably it, it would probably be useful on how to I don't know if it's going to be useful for everyone, but yeah, okay. add the topics that, that you guys find useful and we can discuss what. I, I yeah, so I... uh, in the, oh, yeah. Go on, Michael. Sorry. Okay, thank you. So in the our Google Sheets, I just add one row uh, about idea for additional session and you can just uh, throw your ideas there and then um, I guess it would be it would also be great if we have like a checkpoints maybe halfway through the book club. Yes, that is one more additional um, session, but I don't know. We'll we'll see. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much. So maybe like one session on on pitfalls of submitting your package to CRAN. Yes, especially because the, the, the last session is about how do I release my package? It's probably going to be good to have a package on that, on that point. Yeah. yeah. So I can do a live and demo of how to I, send it to CRAN. The name of the package I have in mind, I have just, I check it, but um, there is an existing package with that name. So I, I need to find another name for my, yeah. <laughs> yeah. With this chapter, I just check the name I have in mind, and I see that there's naming a... stuff is really difficult. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> and you, you don't have to be lucky for no one to oh. release it in the package with the same name when you are developing it. <laughs> All right, so I think I, I'm leaving right now. So uh, see you. Yeah, I, I also have to leave right now. But thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you, Kevin. Good. And yeah, um, thanks also, Shamshidin, for volunteering to present next week. So yeah, it's I really like today's uh, session. We had a lot of discussion. <laughs> yeah. So thank, thank you, you, Kevin. Right. Thank you, guys. See you. All right. See you next week. Bye.